Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio and today is week 14 in the Stash Buster block series and today we're going to make this block. This is called the pinwheel. It's real easy. We have some half square triangles and squares and it goes together really quick. So I hope you'll stay tuned and see how to put this block together. For the pinwheel block, we've got three different colors. We've got a pink, a purple, and a white. Um, and for um, this pur these purposes of this block, I'm going to call this one light, dark, and medium. So for your medium pieces, you're just going to need four squares at a four and a half inch square. Uh, for your purple, you're going to need two that are four and seven eighths inch square. And for your white, you're going to need one that is four and a half inch square, and you'll need two that are four and seven eighths inch square. So let's go ahead and get started. And I'll start by doing the half square triangles first. And we need a total of four, um, but each four and seven eighths inch uh, square will make two. So we just need two of our backgrounds and we need a marker of some kind. I'm just going to use my um, air soluble pen or you could use, you could also use a pencil. So let's, let's use the pencil. It'll be easier to see. So we'll take a pencil and I'm just going to go corner to corner and draw a line and this is on the wrong side of the fabric so I'm going to go to the next piece and do the same thing. And this line will be a mark for a guideline for stitching and it'll be a cutting line. Now I'm going to pair these up with the dark 4 and 7 8 inch squares which is the purple in this case. And just pick four just pick three colors that you like that go well together. So we're going to pair these up right sides together so that that drawn line is on the outside. And now I'm going to stitch a quarter inch away on both sides of this drawn line. Okay, I am using a 50 weight polyester thread. This is so fine by Superior Threads. And you can use uh, all-purpose thread and you can use polyester, cotton, uh, cotton wrap poly, all-purpose thread, you know, just whatever you want. And you can use 40 weight, a 50 weight, a 60 weight, whatever you like. My stitch length is at the standard, which is 2.5. And I have my quarter inch piecing foot on. And so I'm stitching a quarter inch away from that seam and I'm just going to flip it around do the other side then I'll take the other set and stitch a quarter inch away from that one. And flip it around and stitch the other side. cut these apart and I'm just using my scissors and then I'll cut them apart on that drawn line. So that will give me four half square triangles. Now it's time to press these open. 
And for these pieces, I'm going to press towards the dark fabric. So let me trim off these threads. Just, just flip them over and press them to the dark side. There's one. going to trim off these little dog ears and then we'll be ready to lay out the block. So now we're ready to lay out the block and we're just going to start with uh, the pink four and a half inch squares and lay one up here. Then we need a half inch then we need a half square triangle. I'll go next. And there we go. And another pink square, another half square triangle. And they're going to point in different directions. You can see these two are not pointing the same direction. So you have to watch your diagram on that you can get the written instructions and the diagram on my blog and the link is in the description below in the description box so this one faces that direction we need another pink one actually i've got these changed this one here and then this one goes this direction. So follow your uh, diagram so you don't do what I did and get the places, the pieces in the wrong places. So I'm going to leave them here and now I'm going to sew them together and I'm going to show you a different way to sew these together than what I usually do. I usually will sew um, one entire row and then do the next and then the next. This time I'm going to sew all of these pieces together and then add these last pieces and I'm not going to cut them apart they'll all be attached so I'll show you what I mean when I, we get to the sewing machine okay so we're going to go ahead and sew the first two pieces of the top row and I'm just going to line up the raw edges and use a quarter inch seam allowance I'll do the first two pieces of the second row. I'm just going to keep them all attached so we're doing chain piecing here. And then the next two pieces, the first two pieces of the third row. these all lined up okay so what we have the first two pieces of each row just chained together so here's the first row and that is attached to the first two pieces of the second row and that is attached to the first two pieces of the third row and that's down here so now what I'm going to do is add the third piece of each row while these are all chained together so for the, it's a pink square for the top row. And 
then open up the second row and then add the third piece and it's kind of important to have all your pieces laid out so that you don't get them turned in the wrong direction when you're doing this. So I just left them laying on my pressing surface and just pick them up as I need them. And then the last piece, which is a pink square. do some pressing and then we will sew these rows together. Okay so what we have are all three rows. They're all sewn into rows and but they're all attached. You can see the chains right in there. Now we just need to press these and I'm going to press them towards the plain square. So on this first row I'm going to press the seams out on the second row I'm going to press them in. It may be a little challenging since they're all stuck together now but just take your time and, and you'll get that. Okay. Just make sure they're nice and flat. Okay. Now all we need to do is to, to sew these rows together and I'm still going to leave them chained together. I'm just going to flip this one over and stitch along here and then I will stitch this one. Now because I pressed these seams on this top row out towards the outer blocks, I can see uh, my point here on the um, half square triangle. So I can see where this line of stitching goes that direction, this one goes this way. And now I want to stitch, when I'm stitching across, I don't want to go on the left side of that point. I want to go just above the right side of it. So I'm going to take my time on stitching in that area and hopefully I will hit it the first time and not have to uh, fix it. So I'm going to butt the uh, seams together, get them nested together and start sewing. Okay, as I'm getting towards this seam, I want to make sure that I'm going to the right side of where those two lines of, of sewing cross. So I'm trying to get everything lined up. There we go. Looks like I got it pretty good. Now there's another seam on, another point on this seam, but I can't see that. So I'm going to have to um, rely on my piecing being pretty accurate and just keep going. Or I could have stopped, broke thread, and turned this, flipped it over, and gone from the other side, sewn it from the other side. We'll see how that goes. So now I need to sew these together. So I'll do the same thing. I will nest my seams together. And match up my raw edges. And then use my quarter inch seam allowance. And then I'm watching where that point is. Going just above it. Okay, got that. And nest the next seams together. And I'm just 
keeping my finger on them so they don't shift on me. Line things up a little bit better there. Okay. Now we'll go to the pressing surface and see how I did with those points. Okay, so let's see how we did. Well, not too bad. These two points are really good. This one is good. There's a little extra space here, so I could go back through there and flip it over from this side and get closer. And I don't know if you can see, let me outline where they crossed. I don't know that this helps. But um, I kind of drew on there with marker where this line goes across and this one goes across. And here's where I stitched. I needed to get a little bit closer. So I can go back and fix that and get just a little bit closer to that. And that will help keep that extra space away from that point. So now I need to press and, you know, just decide which way you want to do it. It's not going to matter a whole lot. And press that little seam down. I'm just going to press it from the center out. But you can press, press it towards the center if you want to. So there we go. This is, this is the pinwheel block. Now I want to show you what this look like uh, when you have four of these blocks and put them together. And then I'm going to show you an alternate way to do this, which gives the block an entirely different name. Well, here are my two pinwheel blocks. I think you can see them move them up a little bit closer. And then here's another block. This one is called the Lost Goslin. And the only thing different between these two blocks is that the center is the same color as the corner so it's a medium so you have your dark your medium and your light so that's the only thing different with this block and here is another goslin block there we go um, this is one of those blocks that it doesn't matter which way you turn it it's going to look the same every time and that's because it's very symmetrical it's just nothing you're going to do is going to create a different design. Uh, your secondary design is the uh, big four patch here in the center. And so you will have that. But other than that, um, you know, it's, it's, you can keep turning these blocks and they're, they're just going to look the same. You still have this four patch in the center. The star points are going to be pointing the same way. Uh, you know, you're just not going to change it any. Um, but that will still make a pretty quilt. And, you know, this will give you a nice place to do some um, fancy quilting. So once again, you can put them side by side. You could put sashing in between them. You could lay them on point if you wanted. And have a different look that way. Or you could put them just alternate blocks like this and have like maybe a, a purple or a white here uh, that would give you a different look. So there's lots of different things that you can do with this pattern and um, it was fun. It was easy. Went together really fast and um, you know just use some of your favorite colors. You know maybe make um, flag colors if you're in the US use red white and blue um, you know use primary colors uh, which would be red yellow and blue um, you know whatever colors you want you can make this into something really special 
and I think this would be cute for um, a baby quilt or something like that. Just maybe make it smaller if you wanted smaller blocks, but you could do that. You could alter, alter the uh, size a little bit. So here is the pinwheel block, and here is the lost goslin block. So I hope you're enjoying this series. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with this and I am finally seeing a reduction in my stash of scrap fabrics. Um, I started out with three bins of fabrics and I'm down to two. And I am making four of each block. So this is week 14. So I've done 56 blocks already. If that's right, 14 times 4. So, um, you know, it has, it has reduced my stash quite a bit. So I'm, I'm happy with that. So in the meantime, please stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas, click on the video links. And to keep up with my latest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.